you. Um, I think we have a, a game now that Austin has prepared for us to break this up a little bit because we've been concentrating on all these issues. Austin, can you yeah. lead us to the Cahoots game? Yes, awesome. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Um, yeah, if we all if we all could, uh, I got to get the, the teacher out in me. So if we could all turn our cameras on, if you feel comfortable and able, you can do a little, little stretch over here. We've done a lot of sitting and listening. So maybe you get a big stretch in there. Twist in your chair. All right. Woo. Good to see everyone. So um, for those of you who have been coming to CC Dem events, I'm sure you all are familiar with the Kahoot games we've been playing. These questions will not be as tricky as the last one, I promise. Um, but uh, we are going to do an Earth Day themed Kahoot. So let me get the game up and going. And then I will share my screen in just a second so that you all can um, get the code. So if everyone, oh, no, of course I clicked the wrong button. Hold on one second. If you all could get uh, another tab open or um, yeah, another, another tab browser, if you're on your phone, you can do that, but type in kahoot.it. I put that in the chat. Oh, there we go. Aubrey did it. Thank you, Aubrey. Um, click on kahoot.it. Let me get the game going. Takes a minute to load. While Austin is getting that up, the winner of this kahoot is going to win a little giveaway as well. So there's something at stake this time. Other than All right, and so we'll have the, the the code is up here. Can you all hear me fine? I remember last time we had some, the, the, the wonderful Kahoot tunes was overpowering my audio. So I turned the Kahoot tunes down so I could talk just for right now and then I'll turn the music back up. Um, so uh, on your kahoot.it, it should give you an opportunity to plug in a game pin We got them coming, uh, coming in. I love it. I love it. I'll put them. I'll put the tunes back on. You can change a bit. We could go with. Ooh, we could go with disco. I like disco or ad adventure because it's Earth Day. And it, Earth Day is all about going out and adventuring. minute make sure everyone gets uh everyone gets on bill i might i, I might be too young for that reference i don't know all right 30 seconds any last join and of course if you want to oh volume very high Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, I I might be too young for, for Bill's reference. I don't know. Um, okay. So let's get this started. And I got, where's the, I got to get the tunes. There it is, okay. Gaylord Nelson, Senator Gaylord Nelson from Wisconsin, the one who instituted, I listened to a whole podcast about Earth Day this morning and his name 
was brought up multiple times. So yes, excellent. Good work, y'all. Round two. Oh, we have to see who got scores. Marie, excellent. All right. Hundred percent. Silent Spring, yes. All right, let's see where the scores are at. Oh, Bill moved up to the top, just by just by three points. Small, small gap. Was, that one was close. It was actually signed in 2015 during the Obama administration. Oh, I guess 2017 would still be. All right. Scores. Linda's moved up. Oh, tied with with Earth Day Girl. With I didn't I I don't know who that is. Hold on. Dogs are barking. Got to move rooms. All right. Let me click next. We're halfway there. Almost unanimous, but yes, keep global temperature rise to well below two degrees Celsius, even though those other two things are also things we should be achieving. All right, Linda's still in the lead. The US recycles about 17% of our plastic. That one was, it is uh, just under 10% and about 9%. The US recycles about 9% of our plastics, which is not a lot. 17 is also not a lot. Or you would hope that we would get 100%, but 9% uh, is the, the number. All right, last question. I think, uh, I think uh, we, all will, we'll, we all will get this one right, especially after DC's presentation. It, that we plan and we will, we will do it after hearing that presentation in the carbon neutrality plan. All right, let's see who's getting first, second, and third. Third place to Marie. Second to DC and first goes to Anne. Let's give Anne a round of applause. All right, I'll stop sharing my screen. And Aubrey, what is Anne's prize? Aubrey, are you there? I am here. Oh, good. <laughs> Anne is going to win a tote bag, a water bottle, and a um, combination shampoo and conditioner bar. 
Congratulations, Anne. Excellent work. Well, if you can believe this, we are actually. Like that, by the way. Sorry. Which Anne was that, by the way? Is that Anne Johnson or Anne Heitland? Anne, can you unmute and speak up? I think it was me. Okay. Which is amazing because I completely failed the last two times we played this game. <laughs> Okay, we're going to move on and we're actually a minute ahead of schedule, which is like amazing. I didn't think we would achieve this, but Aubrey runs a tight ship and really let, let it out minute by minute what we we're going to do. Our next speaker is Michelle James, who's the Executive Director of Friends of Flagstaff's Future. Michelle, take it away. Great. Thanks, Marilyn. I'm going to share my screen real quick here. Um, get this to work and I think there is some way for me to make this bigger here we go okay great all right so um thank you and I'm glad I'm here I'm here to tell you a little bit about uh friends of Flagstaff's future I'm the executive director um I call it f cubed that's kind of a, a term that's been around for a long time um so f cubed is a small donor supported nonprofit with the goal of um, education and advocacy in our community for policies that will lead um, Flagstaff transition toward a more resilient, sustainable, and just community and economy. We've been a part of um, Flagstaff for over 25 years. We focus on multiple issues, including open space, public space, transportation, trails, climate change, adaptation and resilience, affordability, water and natural resources, local economy and land use. And I've put those focus areas on the slide so you can see that. Um, I'd like to tell you about some of the topics that we've been involved with um, recently that relate to the natural environment. So um, we are involved with the uh, city's discussion and decision-making related to the use of reclaimed water for aquifer recharge and possible drinking. We're working to educate our members and the public and are part of a collaborative effort with other conservation groups, including the Friends of the Rio and the Sierra Club, to bring to Flagstaff a reclaimed water use expert um, to a public event. Our concerns include sustainable water use and its connection to growth, as well as contaminants of emerging concern that are not regulated and include chemicals and toxins that have been found to cause ecological or human impacts. Um, these include pharmaceuticals and personal care products. Uh, another thing that we're working to, to, on doing is we're tracking the development of the city's active transportation management plan, or excuse me, master plan, that will guide bicycle and pedestrian improvements in Flagstaff, including making, making bike lanes safer and expanding opportunities for non-motorized travel within the city. These efforts are related directly to the city's climate emergency declaration and the development of the climate neutrality plan, um, which you guys all know has a, a goal of reaching carbon neutrality by 2030. This is gonna um, involve a big shift is what the city is calling it and how we use cars with the goal of reduction of um, vehicle miles traveled by 50%. So uh, alternate transportation is a really critical part of meeting that goal. Um, F cubed is also monitoring um, the future use of a 300 plus acre section of land called section 17 located just west of Lowell Observatory um, that was made available for observatory purposes in the early 1900s, um, directly to Percival Lowell by the U.S. government. Um, Lowell is looking at possible expansion into this area, and it's mostly um, undeveloped now. It has some lots of uh, user user created trails in it, um, and it's adjacent to just to the east of a uh, section of city owned open space. Um, federal legislation is currently being developed related to the future use of this section and we're providing input on that effort and tracking it, watching it closely. F cubed is working um, also on the balance, on balancing the needs of affordability and um, demands for open space where appropriate. So we're in the early process of, uh, the city, excuse me, is in the early process of planning development of a new neighborhood in the Southeast quadrant of Flagstaff um, in the JW Powell area. Many of you may know about that. We're interested in working with the cities to strategically plan for open space and affordable workforce housing in this 2000 plus acre study area. Another issue related to affordability is that I'm serving on um, a housing commission working group 
that is looking at the connection between affordable housing and sustainability and related policy and zoning changes that we might be able to enact as part of the, um, the uh, housing um, plan, the 10 year housing plan that's gonna be uh, come out in September of this year as a result of the um, affordable housing uh, emergency that was declared last year by the council. F cubed is also uh, tracking potential future projects at Red Gap Ranch, which is 30 miles east of Flagstaff. This was purchased by the city of Flagstaff in 2005 as a groundwater resource to sustain the city's long-term water needs. Um, future uh, projects that are being discussed in this area include feasibility studies for a water pipeline. Um, that would be bring groundwater from uh, the Red Gap Ranch to Flagstaff a large solar project and possibly a carbon sequestration project. And those last two are, are somewhat related, I believe to the, uh, or are related to the uh, climate neutrality plan that the city is working on now. FCUBE is supporting the indigenous circle of Flagstaff and their efforts to obtain um, information from the forest service about past and continued development of the snowball ski resort on the San Francisco peaks. We're also looking at impacts to the city from the 2020 Snowball Master Development Plan that was just released in January, which proposes making Snowball into a four season resort. You've probably heard some of this already. Um, we're concerned about what that's gonna do for the city as well as on the peaks. FCUBE is communicating closely with the city about its draft and carbon neutrality plan, um, which will amend their climate action and adaptation plan. I meet monthly with a group that we call the Fly Flagstaff Planet Partners, and we discuss climate change actions taking place in Flagstaff and Northern Arizona. Partners include the city, the NAU, um, Grand Canyon Trust, and others. So let's go. Michelle, I'm going to have to interrupt you. Your five minutes is up, but thank you for all that great information. Please, really appreciate it. Please join F Cubed. Um, I got the link up there at the top. I'll put it in the chat as well. Thank you so much. Okay. We're going to move on to our next group. It's the Youth Climate Action called YCAT. And uh, speaking of us today are McKenna Marino and Jenna Ortega. McKenna, Jenna, are you there? Hi, yeah, so I am McKenna Marino. I'm a seventh grader at Flagstaff Montessori, Montessori School Flagstaff, sorry. And um, yeah, Jenna, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks, McKenna. So I'm Jenna Ortega and I'm an organizer with NASCA, who's involved with the YCAT, and McKenna's gonna start you guys off by telling you a little about it. About it. Yeah, so YCAT is um, an organization that is youth-led, and it's basically a space for youth to come together and share ideas about how to get involved in climate action and how, um, and like network about events that are already happening. Um, it's really, it can be really hard to find other people who you can organize with, um, that also share an interest in activating for climate change, like activating about climate change. So, um, it's a really great space to, um, form events like that. So, um, I was working on an event outside of the youth climate action team with another group that, um, but it was really great because I got to um, I got to help, I got to, um, here, sorry, give me a second. Yeah, okay, so I got to, um, help, like, network through them, so, yeah, that was really great. They really helped me spread the word about that event, so, yeah. Thank you, McKenna. So, yeah, YCAT, as we call it, stands for Youth Climate Action Team is really more of kind of a space or a platform as McKenna kind of mentioned. It's meant for collaboration, networking, and it welcomes all youth and organizations that support youth activism. Um, earlier, Kyle with ASA talked about some of their actions, which YCAT is involved in as much as we can. We collaborate also with Jesse with Defend Our Future. So it's really just kind of an open platform and I am here because not just that McKenna so kindly invited me to share this opportunity with her, but because as an organizer with Northern Arizona Climate Change Alliance, I am truly honored to be able to offer resources and support to YCAT. 
Um, earlier, Stefan talked a little bit about NASCA and how we support a broad group of teams, efforts, and actions. And we're always exploring different ways to engage our communities and encourage not just awareness, but really active participation in climate issues and solutions. And so our goal isn't just to work with one group of people that are of similar age, class and race, et cetera, which as many of you here know, happens a lot in environmental work, but we really wanna actively listen to those that are overlooked in these movements, um, such as minorities, marginalized communities, and our youth. We all know that climate change is a youth issue. So for me, that means really involving, educating, and helping youth and YCAT develop skills and motivation, which is so important, and to help them create a platform for themselves and not just push my beliefs onto the youth, but what they are here to fight for. So I feel so privileged to be able to work with youth and learn from them. Um, I truly think that they're ahead of us in a lot of this work and their ability to include diversity and intersectionality in their work. So we have a lot to learn from our youth. So basically we're just here to ask everyone tonight to help us get more youth involved. Um, let them know that there's a space for them. They don't have to be climate experts. They don't have to be seasoned activists. They just need to be concerned about their futures and climate or even just curious. So we ask that all of you invite some youth to join us just to try it out and encourage them to get involved in environmental work. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, McKenna, do you have anything to add? Um, not really. I think Jenna really covered it. Okay, then we'll move on. Our next presenters are uh, friends of the Rio de Flag and speaking on the, their behalf is, uh, sorry, Kathy Flackus. Yeah, yeah hi. Um, so I'm gonna see if, if uh, Aubrey taught me how to share my screen. Mm. Yikes, I don't know. Darn. Um, For a little there you go. Yep. Wait. You gotta select, oh. there it's coming. Um, this is in the way. Okay. Thank you. Thanks you guys, I've never done this before. Let's see, come on. All right. Um, so I'm Kathy Flackus with the Friends of the Rio. And um, here's a picture of Francis Short Pond and of the Rio. And I'm really honored to be here today because, you know, usually on Earth Day, we'd be in the park and we'd be handing out, out our beautiful bandanas and we'd be leading walks and we'd be showing maps and we'd be working with people to teach them about the Rio. And that's a lot of what we do. The Rio's our river, and as dry as it usually is, it connects our community. So it flows through almost every community, every neighborhood in town. Um, it's, it's touched by the Rio or one of its tributaries, and it provides open space and floodways and habitat and aquifer recharge and just beauty to our town. And very few people actually know that much about the Rio. We were formed originally to protect, restore, clean up and improve the Rio. And we worked a lot on the, with the city on its flood control plans. Not always with the city, but we were very happy to offer our ideas to them. Basically, we're an all volunteer free membership, doesn't cost anything, there's no dues. We work with the city and the partners to clean up and we have volunteer days to, to clean and restore sections of the Rio. We have talks and we lead walks and mainly what we wanna do is educate people about the Rio, have them love the Rio and to help protect it. We make our voice heard with the city council and with committees. And we've worked with, partnered with 
our friends at Flagstaff Future on different things, and we're often on the same committees. Right now, one of our big, our big um, issues is that the watershed does not obey man-made boundaries like city and county and private property. And um, we noticed that there's different management conducted on different parts of the watershed and not always a lot of collaboration. So um, we facilitated organizing the wharf, which is the watershed, um, let's see, it's the Watershed Alliance for the Rio de Flag. And in that, there were six water, six meetings where, where um, people in the community could, sorry, it's not going to the page I want, um, put, give input to the plan. But the main part is that it's a collaborative thing with the city and the county and tribes and landowners and stakeholders and nonprofits to look at Sorry, guys, it's just not giving me the picture I want. To look at, at how to manage this watershed together and in, in collaboration. That was a really big movement that's taken us about two years to work on. So um, I would suggest going to this website at some time, looking at all the information that's given. There's so much information about the Rio given in the public meetings. It's absolutely fabulous. And, and I'm really proud of this alliance that got together. Um, what I wanna share with you as well is our upcoming events. Let's see if I can get this to work. Um, we, we have walks and And um, it, they, they take place on the first Thursday of every week. I'm sorry, of every month. And the, the, upcom the next one coming up is with on June 5th, Jim David will lead a walk at Francis Short Pond. And if you don't know the history of Francis Short Pond, it's fabulous. He wrote a book about it published last year called Just a Teacher. Um, that'll be fa absolutely fabulous. On, in July, Trevor Henry will be describing the changes to the Rio. In August, we'll look at flooding potential of the museum fire out in Schultz. And all of these walks you can find out about if you go to our website, which I showed in the beginning. Um, in September, we're gonna be launching our new app to the Rio. And there will be a walk about that, teaching you how to use the mapping app to the Rio. Um, yeah, please go back to this website for all that. The, the next big thing that I want you to come and volunteer for is uh, we're launching along with the city, uh, Sierra Club and Friends of Flagstaff Future, we're launching Stewards of the Rio, where it'll be similar to the um, foot stewards, uh, trail stewards, but people actually watching sections of the Rio doing uh, clean up several times a year, but also looking for things like erosion and um, invasive plants and things that, that um, you might want, we might want to keep an eye on in the watershed. So getting volunteers out to adopt a section of the Rio is our next big activity. And we'll be launching that in July along with our partners. So that's what's coming up and that's what we'd like you to get involved in. And you can check all of that out on our website as the, as the time comes closer. Okay, Kathy, thank you so much. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions for the last group of um, speakers. Uh, is there anybody who'd like to, you don't have to put it in chat, you can just unmute yourself and ask questions of the Friends of the Rio, the Youth Climate Action Team, or Friends of Flagstaff's Future. Does anybody have any questions? I'm curious uh, how many of the groups that we've heard from so far collaborate with each other on their projects um, and take their, you know, their different approaches and try to work on the same project. Stefan has an answer. Stefan, you got to unmute yourself. Sorry, I was just going to say yes. Uh, we, we're an alliance, so we work with all kinds of other groups in town and throughout northern Arizona. 
So we work with Citizens Climate Lobby. We work with Fridays for Future. Uh, we work with Elders Climate Action. Um, we work with the NAU Divestment Club and the Green Jacks. And uh, you know, the list goes, the list is long. I'm sure I'm not well, hitting it all. Let, let me help you too. We Thank you, a Jen. bunch of groups here tonight. We also, Jesse with Defend Our Future was with us last night. Kyle, we work a lot with ASA. They're amazing. Azalita Project. Um, we worked with the Sierra Club this year on some RTS scene. Um, I've got to know Michelle with F Cubed through our partner calls through the city, which are a new thing, but have been so helpful to kind of share the work. And um, I think Daryl was at our first call for our indigenous led conversations on climate action in Northern Arizona. So it's so cool to, I'm glad you guys are recording this here, all of this work being collaborated on.